Welcome in, everybody, to a brand new episode of Audio Nuts, episode 11, Make a Wish. Um, we are excited to be here. I am your co-host, Eric Oldboy, alongside Mr. R.E.N. himself. What's up? And we are getting ready to crack away at this bad boy. So uh, I want to start with our favorite stuff, TV. Yeah. What streaming? It, streaming? TV? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Is there anything, I mean, is it different, streaming and TV? Is it not all the same? Or is it still different for people? Well, okay. Funny story, right? When I first met my wife, um, was at this one event, and then we had like an icebreaker breaker thingy. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then I had like uh, a list of questions on here, and we were supposed to go around asking people those questions. And then I, I asked her the question, do you watch TV? And she said, no. I'm like, what? Who doesn't watch TV? <laughs> like, that's crazy, right? Yeah, everybody watches TV. Because in my mind, TV's like streaming, right. Netflix. It's all on the big TV. But in her mind, TV means live TV. Oh, interesting. So it's up to oh, you, I guess. Yeah. I guess in my mind, I always thought about it as you watching everything. Well, anymore, I guess you don't even watch it on a television. My old school mind was, if I watch it on the television, it's TV. Yeah, whether I'm watching a movie or Netflix or whatever it might be, but I guess you know a lot of kids don't even have TVs today. These yeah. days, Everybody you watch on your phone, yeah. your iPad, on whatever device makes them happy. So, uh, yeah, all right. What are you watching currently on well, TV, streaming, whatever? <laughs> right now, I, I just finished uh, Lost in Space. Oh yeah, which was really good. It's re- good, right? Yeah, I recommend it for for anybody. Like you said, the special effects were really good. But yeah, spaceship. I was like, what's pr- that's pretty damn good. <laughs> Like yeah, so effects. I watched that on a TV, a 60-inch TV for that matter, maybe 65 inches. I'd have to check. But, um, yeah, the special effects are top-notch. Yeah. I mean, they're like movie special effects, yeah. especially for a show that they don't, like, promote almost at all. Yeah, nobody knows it. And, like, the robots are really cool. Yeah. Maybe. The and bad guys are really cool. Yeah. I think that's the one thing we were kind of talking about off-air is how well they do with not only the robot-style bad guys... But like the human bad guys, which are almost worse than any of the aliens that they run into. And you just, you love to hate them. They're great. It's kind of like, I I hate them so much, but I appreciate appreciate them as an actor and actresses. Right. You guys do so good. I hate you. Yeah. Like um, the one kind of opposing person. I'm not even sure sure that you can call her a a bad guy, but Dr. Smith. Yeah. And even in the original... um, Lost in Space back in the 60s, Dr. Smith was kind of the bad guy, a stowaway almost, pretending to be a doctor. And in this version, Dr. Smith, they did a a sex swap. It's a female this time, played by the amazing Parker Posey. Oh, yeah. And you love to hate her. And she, but what she does so well is you can sit there for the majority of the season, at least in my opinion, and really dislike her. Like, oh, my God, why don't they just get rid of this, this woman? And then she'll do something totally redeeming. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. She came around. And then all of a sudden, she's back to being terrible again. Yeah. You know, it's it's everyone for themselves. You know, it's yeah. her against the world. In a way. And, they, and what they did this season that I liked is they kind of gave us a couple peeks back into her past. Yeah. So we could see why she, she is so damaged as a person. And I think that's really kind of paid off because now it's like we understand a little bit why she acts the way she does and why she's not so easy to come around. Well, what I like about this season is like they... They kind of gave you a backstory of all the characters, yeah, and what where they set up in season one, and still progress the story forward. Yeah, yeah. they did a really good job of it. This yeah. is one show I didn't feel like they had any filler episodes because yeah. it seems like some shows like they'll have a ton of filler. Like The Mandalorian, I really enjoyed, but they legitimately had some filler episodes, yeah. which is shocking for such a short season. And so, yeah, it's nice that, like you said, you get to see the characters continue to develop yeah. while the story pushes forward without like just some random episode that doesn't belong. Yeah, great story, great acting, gives you a lot of feels. Yeah. Um, a lot of adventure gets you in like all this, in these uh, intense situations. Right. And it, it's a fun show. I yeah. enjoy it a lot. I dig it too. So if you're all you out there are not watching Lost in Space or haven't seen it yet, because you think maybe it's a a kid show or b it's like a remake of some old show and who likes remakes anymore there are no originals they did this really well they honestly could have called it anything they wanted 
and it doesn't really feel at all too much like the original Lost in Space, but it's a, it's a great, great show. Yeah, I tell this to somebody, and they're like, uh, it looks like a show I, I'm not interested in. It's yeah. Like, you, give it a shot, man. It's really good. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. We recommend that one for sure. What else are you watching? Um, I think I'm kind of caught up on my shows. I just got back into, again, The Magicians. Oh, I'm trying okay. to finish that right now. I keep forgetting about yeah. The Magicians. I like it, too, but I... I haven't watched it since like maybe halfway through season two. Yeah, what I, season are they on? Uh, they're airing it live now in season five. Okay. So I'm on season four. I'm halfway through. Okay. But you said it's better to wait for it to show up on Netflix. Yeah. Because you, you, you don't get the censors. Right. Because they, yeah. they censor their own show on the sci-fi channel. Yeah. Like, like for example, Margo is a character that I love. She's awesome. Yeah. And she cusses all the time. Right. And so she's not the same if you don't, you know, hear her. Right. Because you kind of lose part of her personality. Yeah. yeah. All you hear is a beep, 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 beep. Then, what the hell is she saying? That's, that's yeah. really annoying. Yeah. So the magicians, what else? Anything um, else? Other than that, I'm just trying to catch on my anime. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Which anime are you watching? Um, Just the main one, My Hero Academia. <laughs> Um, that's like a popular one right now. Yeah, that's really popular. Um, there's a there's a movie coming out Ooh. that I got tickets to already for that My Hero Academia. Yeah, coming out next uh, next next weekend. Is it a standalone movie or is it a progression of the series? It's a standalone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I'm trying to get myself caught up that way. If they introduce something new, right? You, I won't you be can. like, what the hell, man? Where'd that come from? Yeah, right. That's one of the ones, you know, I'm not as big of an anime guy as you, but really, I like the idea of it. So that's one of the ones I've been looking at trying, but there's just so much good TV, streaming, yeah. whatever yeah. we want to call it, yeah. that I can't even catch up to even give it a shot. Wait, what are you watching now? Um, let's see. So like I said before, I tend to watch uh, shows depending on what part of the day it is. So at lunchtime, I just started watching because I just finished uh, Shit's Creek, so I'm all caught up on that show. Wait, what the hell is that? Oh, we've never talked about Shit's Creek. So Shit's Creek is a hilarious name. Um, it's a pop original. It's actually a Canadian show, and I don't know if I've mentioned this 150 times before. I really like Canadian TV. And so the concept is really simple. This family, a really wealthy, well-to-do family, used to own a video store, a blockbuster type thing, where it was huge, nationally known video stores. Um, what happened is they ended up like cheating the IRS and the video stores all went out of business and the IRS came back after the end and took everything they owned because they never paid taxes. Damn. So as a, as a fun, cause it's uh, uh, two parents and two adult children, one gay son who's super funny and flamboyant. And then one like really uppity, like, Oh my God type daughter. And as a joke, when they were still wealthy, the dad bought the son for his birthday, a small, rural, crappy town in the middle of Podunk, nowhere, called Shit's Creek, solely based because the name was hilarious. Wait, a whole town to himself? Yeah, so he bought him the town. Because <laughs> they had like, they had stupid money. Yeah, right? right, right, right. So it was funny at the time. Well, the IRS comes in, takes all everything they own, takes all their money, takes their houses, their cars, their planes, all their stuff. Right. But for whatever reason, the IRS doesn't want Shit's Creek, so they leave that for them. So since they have nothing, they've got no business, they have no way to make money because they're all rich idiots at this point, they have to move to this little <laughs> podunk town and live in the crappy motel in Schitt's Creek. Well, Schitt's Creek is named after the mayor and his family who's lived there for a really long time, and his name is Roland Schitt. <laughs> Why do you spell his last name? So the, the Schitt in Schitt's Creek is spelled S-C-H-I-T-T-S. Okay. So And they put it right on the, the logo. It's pretty funny. So... Uh, basically it's a fish out of water type story and it really builds it's been on for five seasons and I, I've watched all five seasons it's on Hulu too it's on Hulu and it's on pop the pop channel if you have like live TV streaming mm -hmm. I watch it the new episodes on my YouTube TV and right. you watch the old episodes on Hulu right but uh, yeah it's it's a good show and it gets better as it goes because at first they're kind of annoying because they really are fish out of water and annoying and think they're too good for the town right but it becomes, as it goes along, they get to know all the town members and they start running the motel more carefully. And the, the mom used to be a, a daytime soap actress. So she's trying to get back into acting, but she's terrible at it. Well, so they own the hotel? They own the hotel and they own the town itself. Right. So it's really, really clever and funny. 
And it's, it's one I recommend. So the town basically humbles them. Yeah, it totally yeah. humbles them. I and they get yeah. to really know and like the people that live there. It's really cute. Well, but it's funny, too. Yeah. You and your Canadian shows. Yeah, me, I love me some Canadians. So you can throw that up there with Letter Kenny and, um, uh, oh, shoot, what's the name of that grocery store show? Uh, Kim's Convenience. Kim's Convenience. Those are all Canadian excellent television. But So I just finished Shit's Creek, and I started... Wait, all five seasons? Yeah, I'm all, well, I'm all caught up. Right. So I, I think the season that's on right now is still coming out once a week. Oh, okay, so you're just waiting. It's, and it's, I think it's the final season. So as right. soon as this season, season five, is done, I think that's it for Shit's Creek, and then we're just shit out of luck. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so I, I finished, or at least I'm caught up currently on Shit's Creek. So I started watching um, Sex Education. Oh, season yeah, two. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen that already, right? Yeah, we binge watched that over the weekend when it came out. That show's killing me. So I'm only I'm only on episode two of season two, and yeah. like the very beginning of it. Yeah. But just the first episode alone is cracking me up. Yeah, because remember last season, season one to end, he finally like was uh, secure enough to like self pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> And now he's exploring that. It's freaking funny. Yeah, for everyone that hasn't seen Sex Education, it's actually a really cute show on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. And it stars the kid from Ender's Game. If yeah. anybody's ever seen that, it was a pretty good movie for what it was. And it has a the female lead, and it looks just like a young Harley Quinn. Yeah. And so it's like, why? I mean, that's pretty cool. Is this if, a- if she had like a young sister, yeah. You know, it's a like a British show somewhere in it's like a European yeah. type show, but it's kind of funny how it's like a Europe like European or British show. Yeah, but they they make the schooling like a U.S. school in yeah. a way. It's kind of like a, a play on sort of thing, like making yeah. fun of maybe. Maybe yeah. maybe they're yeah making fun of it, parodying yeah. it a little bit. I think we talked about uh, maybe an episode or two ago how it also has uh, Gillian Anderson in it and how much oh, yeah, yeah. more hot she is now as an older milf than she was on uh, X Files. <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's a fun show because the mom Gillian Anderson is a sex therapist, and so her son, the kid from Ender's Game, has picked up on all of these like traits and tips, and he understands yeah. it really well. And why he himself is a little screwed up over his parents' divorce and whatnot, and he can't uh, self pleasure. Um, he helps ends up helping all of his schoolmates with all their sexual problems. Right, and it's just really funny. And they make it a business. Yeah, they end up yeah. turning it into kind of a business. Yeah. So, uh, and it, it does a lot to talk about, um, you know, what it's like to be a teenager in today's age and those types of things. And, I mean, I don't know. It's really, I, yeah. I'm really digging it. I love the first season. The first episode had me because there was one just absolute shocking scene that was just like, it just cracked me up. So, while it's very cute and smart, it does have really over-the-top dirty scenes every once in a while just to jolt you back into yeah. it. Well, the thing is, uh, usually shows kind of like die down as the season season progress. Yeah, this one I liked it all the way through, like nice. from season one and season two. Well, I think too they've done a really good job casting, and all the actors are extremely likable. Yeah, like, I like all of them. I can't think of really anybody because some shows you're like, oh, I don't like that character. Yeah, but I like everybody on this show. It's well done. So um, yeah, so Sex Education at uh, lunchtime, and then I've been watching with the fam lego masters at night oh yeah you've been telling me about that yeah and i I know i'm kind of late to the party because i think it's been out for a handful of episodes but it's hosted by will arnett batman Uh, himself i'm batman yeah will arnett from lego batman um and also of course arrested development fame one of my all-time favorite shows same same only the first three seasons season one through three the the og episodes from when it was on fox Oh my gosh! Yeah, once it went to Netflix, it wasn't that good. It was fine, yeah. but that was it, right? Yeah. It was a fine show. If, if anybody just started watching those episodes, they'd be like, "I don't get why you think Arrested Development's so great." But yeah, the OG Arrested Developments were amazing. So Will Arnett is now hosting Lego Masters, and it's kind of—I know you've probably seen these type of shows. That probably everybody has. Yeah. But like these kind of Bake Off cooking shows, where uh, it's like a reality show, and they're like trying to put together the most amazing cake for you know Easter or whatever it so might be. They get like challenges. And yeah, they... it's like teams, teams of two right. building cakes. So they've basically stolen that that concept wholesale. 
Right. And they just replace the cakes with Legos. Yeah. Instead of the ingredients, it's just Legos. Yeah. Right. And it's like yeah. an insane amount of Legos. So they, they have like this big area and there's, I think like 10 teams of two and they can pull pretty much any Lego that's ever existed. And it's just, like I said, the concept is just like any of these other shows. So in the first one, I've only seen, to be fair, I've only seen episode one. I think I have two more to catch up to. Well, that's it? Live. Oh. Yeah, I think it's only been out for about three episodes. But um, in the first episode, the first challenge is for them to make uh, a theme park. And each person, each t- each uh, team of two has to make their own theme park out of their own heads and everything. And they get 15 hours. And I thought, oh my God, that's a really long time. But when you see how intricate the stuff is that they make, it's almost shocking that they can do it in 15 hours. I mean, how does that work? Do they stay on set to do it? I'm assuming that, yeah, they just, like, because they get them all their own stations, and then they go, go. You know, it's just like one of these shows where you see the giant clock up on top, and it's ticking yeah. away, and they all start running around like crazy people, grabbing Legos. And some have different strategies, because they give them, it looks like they give, like, some sort of tablet. I don't know if it's an iPad, but they all get right. tablets. And I don't know if that's... It's probably equipped with some sort of Lego building software. And so some of them are really planning. They're just like figuring out how to plan what they're going to build. And some of them just start like sticking bricks together. And they have just the most like a good casting, uh, unique set of people. Like I was kind of excited because there's one group um, from Oregon, you know, our home state. Um, they look like the most Portlandy guys you've ever seen. So <laughs> Were they, do they have beards? Yeah, both of them have beards they're both wearing flannel yeah you know one's got some goofy name you know it's, it's so portland and so their theme park was literally called like timberland or timber i don't know timber world it was some sort of axe throwing fantasy theme park with a and, soccer field maybe yeah. <laughs> and they built it they had i forget what the their motion was so part of the other part of what they had to do in that first episode is not only did they have to build a theme park but they had to have some sort of like a moving portion of it that actually operated really like a roller coaster yeah so there were roller coasters the team that ended up winning had a ferris wheel yeah that worked and it was really cool and these guys are like super nerdy like one's an engineer the other one teaches engineering what the heck i'm like how unfair and the kid the guy that teaches engineering literally said in his like little interview piece that he teaches using legos because everybody understands that yeah what if like you know how in um that master chef with uh chef ramsey oh yeah gordon ramsey gordon ramsey you know there's like a kid version they're gonna oh, make, right they're gonna make a kid version of this one it seems like they should right, right? it's the same channel too yeah. so it's the same channel as the uh, what is that show called master chef master yeah. chef junior yeah yeah that. yeah so i wouldn't be shocked if this show gets any kind of ratings that it'll, it'll be lego masters junior and you see like a little six-year-old building like a masterpiece like what the truth? you'll be like what the heck how's he so good but yeah, it was impressive. Even the sucky teams would build better than anything you know you or I could ever do. Yeah. And uh, so there's all sorts of unique teams. There's every ethnicity, every sexual orientation. And it's pretty cool. It was a really unique show. Well represented. Yeah, yeah. well represented. Like one team was a father and son Puerto Ricans. And oh, it nice. Was, it was kind of cool because the, the dad, he had to be like 65. The fact that he wanted to do Legos was interesting, but he was into it. There was a team of two older white ladies from like the Midwest that were each in their like 50s or 60s. <laughs> and I was like, why did they like Legos? And then there were teams that you would expect, you know, the kind of teams you're used to. Right, right. But yeah, so I dug it. I'm totally, and what was also kind of funny is because Will Arnett, he played to the point that he understands that he's on this kind of hosting of a reality show that's kind of goofy. Yeah. And so he makes fun of all the tropes that you're used to seeing in these types of shows. So he's always constantly like, right now is when I tell you someone will lose, but not now. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next is a commercial. Yeah, yeah. At one point, he they have this giant clock, and they're standing on a, a, this above perch. It's him, and they have two judges who are both apparently real Lego masters that work for the Lego company Damn. and make all the things. And so they're standing out there, and he goes, I, I asked the producers if we could come up with a really unique way to gently remind everybody that they only have an hour left to go. And as, as he's saying it, the clock hits an hour. Everything turns around. He's like, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> And so they, they almost mock themselves in right. the, the type of show it is, which it's, is cool. It's like him playing Deadpool, and he, yeah. he, he knows he's in a, in a comic. A, well, that's just it, yeah. yeah. They did the smartest thing in letting Will Arnett be Will Arnett. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, and then the other show we've been watching, apparently we only watch reality at nighttime, is um, 
uh, the masked singer oh yeah, yeah and that show is hilarious um my family loves it and so we're always trying to guess you know who's who and it's never who you think it's gonna be never ever so um that's kind of what we're watching particularly right yeah, now. They, they tricked you the whole time right well, it's amazing. Like, I don't want to give anything away for anybody who hasn't seen because this is the kind of show you'd feel absolutely devastated about if you tell someone what it is yeah. and they're into it. But there was a llama character, and everybody thought it was one way because of the clues that they yeah, gave. Yeah. And it turned out being someone completely different. We were all, like, so thrown off. Yeah, I went back and listened to him sing, and I yeah. couldn't tell. Like, this guy sings this? Yeah, you no. can't even guess. Yeah. And what's amazing is uh, who can sing and who can't sing. Like, I've been shocked. Like last season, I figured we could talk about last season. If you haven't seen it yet, too bad, so sad. But they had Victor Oladipo from um, the Indiana Pacers. It was him. Yes. I told you it was you, him. I know you guessed after yeah. one watch. I thought it was going to be Montel Jordan because he was a character called Thingamajig. And they dressed in these elaborate costumes. Yeah, yeah. And so he was dressed like this giant monster. And mm. I thought for sure it was Montel Jordan, who's a really tall like hip-hop singer from back in the 90s. And turned out to be Victor Oladipo. And I had no clue. This guy can sing. Yeah, he's really good. Like, he could have a professional singing yeah. career. Because, you know, he's good at two things. I think one time during the NBA All-Star game, yeah, they um, have him, like, he sang at a little interview. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? This guy can hell sing. Well, after seeing that, because, you know, we've spoken many a time that our Blazers are our team. Dame, Damian Lillard, also a.k.a. Dame Dalla is a rapper, he should totally get Victor Oladipo to come sing like a hook yeah. on like one of his rap songs and they could have like a total like basketball song and not be cheesy about it because they're both <laughs> good at what they do. He's right. a good rapper and Victor is a great, great R and B singer. Right. So those are that's what we've been watching. Um, the only other thing I've been watching off and on, because I'm trying really hard to catch up, is Clone Wars. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, because <laughs> the new the new season's coming out, right? The new season comes out tomorrow, uh, Friday the twenty second, and um, wait the, tomorrow tomorrow dude tomorrow our guru's gonna be like, have you watched it yet? Yeah, <laughs> dude, I know. you're not gonna be. I there. won't even be there, so you'll have to like fill in for the yeah. the hot Clone Wars talk. I like so I was struggling. That show sometimes really can drag for me, and I'm a Star Wars guy, but not as much as obviously other people. And for me, Clone Wars is really well done. It's really well put together. But some of the episodes are so similar, just like, oh, nations fighting nations, spaceships fighting spaceships. And I got kind of bored with it. Yeah. And so what happened is after I see like three episodes that are a little too similar, I'll like forget about it for a while. They take a break. You should watch it like double time speed or something. Right? <laughs> Just get through it. But uh, it, I started watching again. And I'm halfway through season two. Well, you're in season two already? Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm putting in some time. Yeah. Putting in some time. And it's already way better. So I've really actually been enjoying season two. Yeah. But there's no way I'm going to catch up before no. tomorrow, obviously. So I'm hoping Disney does what they've been doing and they kind of do one episode at a time. And maybe as that one's being let out, one episode per week, I can continue binging the rest of it. Yeah. And by the time it's all out, I can just binge the last season you, in you one sitting. catch up, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, that's the perfect perfect segue into the healthy stream. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of all I had for Disney Plus was Clone Wars. Have you watched any more of it yourself? No, I, there's so much stuff to watch. Dude. I can't keep up anymore. I know we're living in like the golden age of TV. It's incredible. I need like to learn how to watch two shows at the same time. It just like split my focus. <laughs> you would probably not be able to take in either one of them very well. Oh. You'd be like, it's like my wife. She doesn't watch anything. She listens to everything. And so we've actually gone back in time with her because of all the devices. Yeah. She sits there and stares at her phone the whole time, never looks up at what we're watching. And so I've always asked her, she goes, no, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And so it's almost just like listening to the radio for her. I could probably do that too. Like Clone Wars is be like a background show. And as long as I kind of know what's going on, it's okay, right? I think Clone Wars, you could totally make a background show. Yeah. Because it takes its sweet time. I mean, they're only 25 minute episodes. But it takes its sweet time for the whole 25 minutes for a pretty simple idea. Yeah, because sometimes I play video games and yeah. watch a show at the same time. So it's probably the same, maybe. I don't know. I'll I don't do that too much. But once in a while, when I was really hot and heavy on um, Link's Awakening, I was playing that during the reality shows. Because oh, yeah. you definitely don't have to pay attention <laughs> yeah, to reality yeah, shows. Yeah. That much I know. 
But um, when I'm looking at all the hot new stuff, you think it's busy now? You think it's too much to watch now? Oh my God, we're, we're, we're coming into it. I was looking ahead and there's so many good trailers for shows coming out. This is both a healthy stream and tasty trailers all mixed into one happy bunch. But there is a lot of TV that I'm excited for coming out soon. So just finished on Apple, and I think you finished it too, was Mythic Quest. No, I haven't, I haven't watched it. You haven't it. finished no, no, no. it? Or you haven't even watched it yet? Because I, I really wanted to finish Lost in Space before okay. I get into it. And so I did. Dude, so. I bet you, and I don't know if you're doing something other than watching TV like a normal person this weekend, but you could you could kill Mythic Quest this yeah, weekend. Yeah, I think so. Even if you just did it like did normal people stuff during the day yeah. and hit it at nighttime, because they're only like 25 minutes. There's only like eight to 10 episodes. Yeah. And it's easy. This is my goal to begin. Yeah. And then we can talk about it more because yeah. it's a really good show. Like I said last episode, it totally gives me those Silicon Valley vibes. Right. But Amazon, or, or excuse me, Apple TV is finally kind of like coming out with more interesting things. And they're coming out with the brand new uh, show called Amazing Stories. And I'm real excited about this because Amazing Stories, I don't know if you remember this show coming out originally back in the um, late 80s. No, that's before my time. Before your time. Yeah. And these are my favorite. Every time I'm like, have you ever heard of this? You're like, oh, you're old. Back in my day. Back in my day, we had the Amazing Stories. So Steven Spielberg, the Steven Spielberg of, you know, everything awesome. Yeah. Uh, had a show back in the day called Amazing Stories. And what it was is it's an anthology of kind of short sci-fi oriented television shows. Oh, nice. And uh, Apple TV has rehired Steven Spielberg to do it again, which is really cool because there was no like overarching story that you couldn't just, the formula you just kick in again. And so um, they said they're going to focus around five different stories. So Amazing Stories is coming to Apple TV on March 6th. Oh, within my year still. Yes. <laughs> watch yeah, it. we can totally still watch yeah. it on our free year. Uh, but Amazing Stories looks good. And I watched the trailer for it, and it had all sorts of um, good actors involved. I guess, it, like I said, it follows five different stories. Each one is kind of sci-fi sci oriented. Uh, some of them look kind of superhero-y. Some of them look kind of scary. So they kind of touch on a bunch of different things. So is it kind of like one episode is one story? Or how are they, they going to do it? You know, I'm not sure. And I honestly can't remember if that's how they did it before, where each episode followed one story, then the next episode you got a different story, and yeah. so on and so forth. Or if it's an hour long, and maybe you get two stories in an right. hour, or three stories. Um, we'll have to learn more as it gets closer to coming out. Remember that one on Netflix where they, they had like a bunch of little mini stories where like different um, animation? Oh, that's right. Maybe kind of like that, right? Was that the robots? Was there a robot show? Yeah, there's like a robot show. Yeah. There's like this weird, yeah, like alien monster. Yeah, it's totally like that. So I'd almost compare it from seeing the trailer to what if Black Mirror, rather than each episode being kind of standalone, they broke it up into a bunch of chunks. Yeah. So it's it's I think that's what it's going to be like is a bunch of chunky Black Mirror episodes. But it looks good. It looks like the production value is pretty high. It seems like Apple TV is not afraid to spend money. So. They should, they should like hire us. I got an idea. Can you do this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could come up with amazing stories all day. Yeah. Easy peasy. Um, Netflix is also coming out with a new show that looks super good, too. Um, it's from the producers of Stranger Things. Wait, are we into the tasty trailers, then? Oh, yeah. We oh. tasty trailered over to it. Wait. I remember I said it's a combo. This is yeah. like, uh, here's a $10 word. It's an amalgamation of healthy stream and tasty trailers. You know, the healthy stream came in the room. We saw the tasty trailers over here. They made they made eye contact. And then they made sweet, sweet, glorious love. And it's giving us this because there's nothing but tasty trailers. But they're all going to be part of our healthy stream eventually. Nice. Nice. I mean, our bladders are full. Like we've been drinking Gatorades <laughs> and cranberry juice. This is, this is amazing. So, yeah. We are in the tasty slash healthy. It's the tasty healthy stream. The tasty trailers. Yum, 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 yum. But um, yeah, Netflix is uh, got a new show from the producers of Stranger Things called I'm Not Okay With This. And that trailer looks kind of cool. And you pointed out that the actress is from um, It. It. Yeah, the main girl in there. Yeah, she's the one. Cause she actually lops off her hair in that movie. Or does she have long hair in that movie? No, she cuts it in the movie. In the movie. Yeah. It's just she still has short hair, yeah. so she must have cut it for the movie and just kept it. But that looks pretty good. So um, 
from what I can tell, is this the one where you said, I know exactly what's going to happen, or is that a different one? That's a different one. Okay, we'll, get, is, we'll get to that. Then. This is the one where I like, hey, the other guy's from It too. Right, you said yeah. he was from It as well. Yeah. Which character was he on It? He was the, the Jewish one that saw like the, the painting that came to life. Oh. He, got, he got his little like bar mitzvah. You right, know? he's the kind of like the, the kid that talks trash. Oh no, he's the, was he the kid that broke his arm? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was getting him confused. That's a, I need, You know, I've never seen It Part 2 yet. What? I know. Uh, I've been waiting should. for it to show up on yeah. streaming. I liked it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's got a couple of kids from It, apparently. And it's kind of hard to tell because it's one of these things where she's doing, she's talking, she's narrating the trailer yeah. for us. And she's like, oh, you know, it's hard being a teenager. My dad just died. I'm feeling real weird. Yeah. And everybody's kind of being dicks to her. Then all of a sudden she's like, she goes to like, she's like walking down the railroad tracks, feeling all grumpy and throws a rock at like a sign. No, was it a dog tag? Was it his, the, that's yeah, not what she yeah, threw? I think her dad. Her okay, she was chucking tag. her dad's dog tags. Yeah. And it hits the sign, and the sign just busts out of the ground and flies yeah. across the like the land. Like if like Superman threw a rock. Right. You know? Yeah, and all of a sudden she's like, oh shit. And it's, like, it's hard to tell from this trailer what powers she has because later on, now we've like, oh man, she's got superpowers. Later on they show her in like a mini mar or something, get angry, yeah. and all the crap comes off the shelves. And then later on, she's able to like throw like bowling balls in her mind. Yeah, she uses you know? like she's like a telepath too. Yeah, and, and like after I watched it, I'm like, this is kind of like a a recent day Matilda. You know, have you seen Matilda? <laughs> Where she's able to control things with her mind and like start floating shit around. Matilda is the one with the little girl in the yeah. blue dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I know the movie, but I'm not sure I've ever seen Matilda. That's hilarious, though. It's like a modern-day Matilda. I was going the other way. I was thinking that she's almost like an Omega X-Men. Like, she has all the powers. Let's see. She could throw something really strong. Or she's strong. And there's one scene where she's all shaky. Like, the room's all shaky and shit. Right, she's moving stuff. Maybe maybe it's all just telepath stuff. Because I thought that maybe it's all in her mind, but then she's able to do it for other people, people to see. So it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. It's... Because the other kid from It's kind of like, oh, yeah, well, you're pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. But, yeah, that show looks, I don't know, it looks pretty cool. And that one comes out even sooner than Amazing Stories. It comes out on February 26th. Yeah, in the month. End of the month. So we're, we're close. We're only five days away from I'm not okay with this. And I'm, I think that'll be one we'll probably talk about because yeah. it looks well done, too. Because we're going to be okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, I also saw that. Because I follow the Umbrella Academy yeah. on the Twitters that they posted that season two is on its way. Nice. Yeah, so they're teasing it. I don't have much to say about it because they just showed a couple. It would almost look like colored. They, they released basically one tweet for every character. And it looked like there was a colored umbrella with just their eyes. And it said just a big two. Oh. And so I'm like, oh, nice. So they don't really uh, inform us yet when it's coming, but I'm stoked. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about it. Yeah, I love me some Umbrella yeah. Academy. But uh, yeah, so uh, moving over to uh, Hulu. Hulu. Uh, Hulu. Hulu, um, as we, I think we talked a little bit about in the past, Hulu has a deal, well, because they're part of the Disney conglomerate. Yeah, uh, they have they're moving a lot of FX stuff to Hulu, and so um, Hulu's been promoting a lot of FX shows. And FX is coming out swinging since the Disney merger, and they have uh, a couple of shows. They actually have a bunch of new shows coming out, like four or five new shows. Wait, what's the difference between um, FX and FXX? Well, it used to be that FX was like a main channel that you would get with a standard cable subscription. And then if you got like a premium stuff, you would start to get like those extra weird channels that no one watches. But FX was like in that grouping. Oh, weird. And one played more television shows or one played more movies. And now I can't tell the difference at all. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's any difference. Even though it seems like maybe some of the FXX stuff is going to be Hulu exclusive. So it's really weird to think that it's an FX show, but you can't watch it anywhere but Hulu. But it's not a Hulu original. Oh, weird. Right? <laughs> So I don't even know how to do the math on that, but pretty soon they'd be like Disney. Yeah, they just didn't call it all Disney. I don't yeah. know who they're they're trying to fool. But yeah, so Hulu or FX or somebody, Disney, one of them, they're all the same. Um come out with a show called Dave. 
And I've never been so excited for what looks to be a hilarious show than oh, Dave. Oh, yeah. This is right up your alley. So up my alley. <laughs> yeah. So Dave stars uh, a rapper named Lil Dicky. Lil D. Lil, Lil Dicky. Lil. And for those of you who don't know Lil Dicky, he's been around for a while. He started off as almost like a joke rapper. Yeah. Like he was. It was all like comedy stuff. In fact, even his name is a joke, right? He's yeah. making fun of his own uh, member. Yeah, because they, they do that in the show, too. Yeah, like the trailer. Yeah, well, so this new Dave show. So Little Dicky's real name is David. David something. I have it here. Hold on. Uh, but it, they call the show Dave because it's actually named after him. It's that's his real name. That's his real name. Yeah. And supposedly, um, this whole series Dave is about the how Little Dicky actually became a superstar because he can He started off just making kind of uh, jokey raps. And what's interesting, and I just know this. I don't even have to look this up. Because I just know dumb things. Um, Lil Dicky was in marketing first, like you and I. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he was one of us that succeeded on his dumbass dream. So he started, uh, his original name is David Bird. Not Bird as in flying, but B-U-R-D, Bird. Bird. And he started going by Lil Dicky. And it was all kind of like silly songs. And then he, because he's a good rapper, he was like not only was he making these jokey raps, they were like he was good at it. And he became popular enough to where he started like doing like crossover songs with real artists, like Chris Brown. Yeah, what was that song called? Snoop Dogg. Oh, Chris Brown one was called Freaky Friday. Like Freaky the movie. Friday. Yeah, yeah, and the whole they were like switched spots, and he was all excited yeah. to be Chris Brown. Chris Brown was sad that he was Little Dicky. <laughs> I've heard ones with like Fetty Wap in them. Yeah, that, it, the like, Fetty Wap songs actually really good. It says that he's worked with Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber. Um, well, because that's the one song, the world song. Oh, that everybody sang. That's it, that's so. how he did it. Because I'm like looking at these names: Ed Sheeran, Shawn Mendes, in one song, Kevin Hart, Wiz yeah. Khalifa. Yeah, he, he got them all in one song. Yeah. Son of a bitch! I was like amazed by this Wikipedia page. But um, so genius marketing. He's yeah, yeah. marketing. And that's just it. I think that's part of the reason. Not only is he a good rapper, but he's a really good marketer. So he's never tried to be hard or to be a gangster or any of that stuff. And so the the show reflects that. So it's it's little Dicky gone back in time, and now we're learning like what he was before. Dave. And Dave. Yeah. He's just Dave at this point. He's trying to become a rapper, and it's it kind of shows all the things he goes through. He talks about like spending his bar mitzvah money to make his mixtape. <laughs> And he needs studio time, and he's, like, getting made fun of by other rappers. And he's like, literally talks about how small his member is. That's why his name is called Lil Dicky. Yeah. They're like, he, yeah, one clip on the show, he's, like, at a doctor with his pants around his ankles. And you can't see anything as a viewer, but the doctor's looking at his thing. And he, he, Lil Dicky's like, yeah, it just hasn't grown since I was an infant. <laughs> Which is so funny. Well, the thing is, like... He plays to his look, you know, like yeah. dude doesn't look like a rapper at all. Like he looks more like like that the painter, the Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's like, just like a pro. young Jewish cat, right? Yeah. He's just a young white guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he doesn't look like a rapper. And so he owns it though, and he's turned this ownership of who he is into like a really funny version of it. Right. And so yeah, I'm super excited for the TV show Dave. Um, it comes out uh, when did it come out? Hold on. It comes out March 4th. And uh, so we got a lot of good stuff coming out at the end of February. and kind of, March. Yeah, March. Next one's going to be called Brian. The Rich Brian Show. <laughs> oh, Rich. I'd watch a Rich Brian Show. It's, it's the same idea, right? Same idea. Yeah. He was kind of a jokey rapper. He had even a, a jokey name he didn't yeah. be able to use. And so, yeah, same idea. So I'm super stoked on Dave. I think that's going to be a good one. Um, Hulu also has another show coming out. That looks really interesting, and I'm not I'm not totally sold on, sold on it, but it's the type of show that I normally kind of like, called Devs. And oh, I, yeah. I, you watched the trailer for I Devs. What would you think? It was interesting. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't ever have an opinion. <laughs> it's weird. Well, it starts. It has. I don't know if he's the star, but he's definitely a main cast member. But it's got Nick Offerman. You know him as Ron Swanson. Oh, yeah. I was like, is that Ron? Yeah, you're like, is that Ron? I thought you were talking about Ron Weasley. I'm like, is Ron Weasley in it too? Because yeah, he had like long hair. It looked like a freaking, um, like a wildling or something. Yeah, but this show so far has gotten um, the early the early critics who have gotten to see it ahead of time. has gotten really good reviews. Um, Indie Wire says that Devs uh, is a series that is a contemplative knockout. 
So apparently it's a thinker, but it's an enjoyable thinker. Well, well this is this is the one I told you that. I already know what's going to happen. This is the one you know. Okay. Yeah. So describe the trailer and then tell us what you think is going to happen. Okay, wait. You describe the trailer because it's kind of like forgetful for me. <laughs> so in the trailer, it looks as if, because I'm assuming devs is short for developers. Yeah. And so this young guy's wanting to be part of this, this like almost like, it almost looks like a cult. It's like this culty group. And I, I'm guessing they're going to be in some weird ass area of Silicon Valley, but they're in like, it almost looks like a lot of trees. Maybe it's even Oregon. Who knows? They're on this weird campus. And he wants to move to this better development area because he's part of like maybe like the, the where the people come in and get hired in there. That first... scene that scene almost reminded me of like a ex machina in a way, like where uh, Poe Dameron's little office is all in the forest. You know. Well, you you want to know why? Because this show is from writer director Alex Gardner, who made Ex Machina. Oh shit. <laughs> This really makes me do think you're gonna guess what it is Dude. now. Okay, that's so funny. Yeah. That you, it's true. I'm not, I'm not telling. you. We're not making this up. It's not like he knew that ahead of time. He just literally said that and had no <laughs> idea that's the case. That's incredible. I'm gonna bring you on like a game show and just like put all my money on whatever you guess because that's that's pretty crazy. So, oh look, I'm not bad either. So I'm looking at the synopsis and it says it's about. Uh, Silicon Valley's Redwoods. So oh, nice. There you go. You're right. I'm right. We're yeah. figuring the show yeah. out. We didn't go on a game show then. Right. So um, yeah. So basically, the guy's trying to move to this other area where the developers are, and the lady. You hear some voice of this lady like warning them. Oh, don't do that. And someone else like it's like a cult. And so apparently, once they move into this like weird building where all the developments coming from, wherever it is they're right. making. Uh, it's just becoming super weird. Things are going sideways. There's a lot of weird cut scenes and things we can't quite understand yet. And her curiosity is like, I need to know. Yeah, everybody, they're, you're peaked because you want to know what the heck's going on. They show like a giant doll hovering over the redwoods. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, my, my prediction of this is this is all based in a computer. And oh. this is what you see... Like, oh. like happening in the computer, you know, like um, or, like how would you explain that? Um, That's a hot take, though. Um, because you know, like you say, dev stands for developer because a lot of people yeah. use you know that terminology, and so this is like what happens when a developer develops something in like a micro scale, and they're putting that into life to explain or show you how how it happens, you know. And then maybe she's like some kind of glitch or something that's trying she's to She's like, the glitch. Yeah. Oh my god. That's such a good take because it would explain why there's a giant doll like hovering over the campus. And then you see all these yeah. weird visuals because they're part of the game. Yeah. Or the whatever doll, it is they're developing. The doll is just like somebody's like uh toy right on the computer. <laughs> you know? I almost wonder, you know, because we now know that it's the ex machina director and writer, if um it's another AI thing. Because yeah. remember, Ex Machina was all about AI. This guy clearly thinks a lot about artificial intelligence. Yeah. What if what we're seeing is the inside of the robot's brain? Yeah. So, well, yeah. Something like it, that. It all yeah. ties together yeah. so perfectly. It's like a prequel to Ex Machina. It'd be funny. Oh, yeah. If it was somehow connected. Yeah. I'd be down for that. And the whole the whole time is like them trying to find the, uh, the conscious of, of AI or something like that. Yeah, maybe they had to go like physically search for it. Yeah, so that's that's my uh, hot take on that show. <laughs> nice. No, I think that's cool. Um, there's also another show that I just saw. It's very also kind of weird and strange like Devs is. Yeah, you showed me that one too. And it, it gave me like a lot of um, Inception vibe in a way. Oh, okay. Like, so this one's called Dispatches from Elsewhere. And it stars Jason Siegel of How I Met Your Mother fame. Yeah. And... Uh, what was that movie he was in where he shows his ween? Oh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Yeah. Yeah, so also Forgetting Sarah Marshall. So what was your take on that one? Are you able to guess what the hell's going on in that one? No, that one's weird. It's kind of like you said, like I said, Inception mixed with like a Matrix sort of thing. I don't really know what's going on in that one. Yeah, I was trying to look and see if they tell you any really references about it. So this show is on AMC. Um, so you're going to need to either have a cable provider or a YouTube TV type streamer, Hulu TV type streamer. 
Um, or, I, you know, I found out yesterday that you can actually stream just AMC by itself because my mom apparently does that. How do you do that? Do you, you have to subscribe to it? Yeah, you can subscribe to AMC on its own. So if anybody's just into AMC, because she actually did it, she said, um, a while back for Walking Dead, and she was specifically just streaming The Walking Dead. And she's like, I can't figure out how to cancel. I wish they'd come out with something good. Well, this is for you, Mom. They're coming out with a new <laughs> show. <laughs> finally, finally, a new show called Dispatches from Elsewhere. And, uh, yeah, they've just released the trailer, and it looks kind of like... Um, it says the series is based off an original story. So it was created by a company called Nonchalant. Um, it's from a series of games called Nonchalant. And it was a, a TV show or a, a radio show. It was an original, like, actual game that people would play. And so you'd run around try to figure out all the weird stuff, and it feels almost magical as you're solving clues around oh, yeah, big yeah. cities like San Francisco. So this is a fictional version of that idea. So... It looks like um, uh, the main character becomes kind of bored with life like a lot of TV show and real people do. And he gets involved in what he thinks is this game of going around, discovering all this weird stuff happening around this big city. It's like playing Pokemon Go. Yeah, totally. There's a Pokemon over there. We gotta go. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like that. But as they're doing it, more and more of it becomes weirder and weirder. And you start to wonder, well, what's real and what's maybe something else? And they, even the characters in the trailer, kind of, some of them are still like, "Oh, it's just, it's, just, it's a game." And then there's another character who's like, "This is, this is real. This is real magic." Yeah, it's kind of like um, they got so into it that it seems real in a way. Right. Yeah, it says uh, that they will come to find that the mysterious winds far deeper than they ever imagined. It's like their tag. Yeah, there's one scene where uh, Marshall was like. This is the closest thing I've ever, you know, gotten to magic or something like that, right? Yeah, it was like showed like a wall, like turning into liquid or something weird yeah. going on. So, yeah, it's pretty impressive the things that they're doing. The one dude, the other dude, is he in? What's that band call? The one that goes like shake it like a polar away picture, you know? Oh, wow. it is Andre Three Thousand. Is that him, dude? That's totally who oh, it is. Shoot. So the start. There's a lot of good actors in the show. Jason Segel is like obviously the big one I noticed right away. But it also has Andre Benjamin, also known as Andre Three Thousand. It's oh, funny that you recognize yeah. that. And then also semi pro, bro. Yeah. <laughs> And then also um, Sally Field, who is a super famous actress, has been around for a hundred years. Um, and Martha. Then, yep. Yes. Wasn't she Martha? Yeah, she was Martha yeah. <laughs> from Superman. Um, also Richard E. Grant and Tara Lynn Barr. So I mean, the, the show has like a great cast, and I guess it's more of a mini series than anything. So hopefully that means you'll get one strong season of ten or so episodes, and we'll know. From the ending when it happens, we don't have to wait until a second right. season, which I'm kind of digging miniseries now they do them this way. Yeah, at least you get a conclusion, you know. Because so many good shows start, and then you're like, you're so excited, and then there is no conclusion, and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Well, I saw in the trailer too where it says that it was produced by Jason Eagle too. Oh, cool. Yeah. And he also made the one really good Muppet movie. Well, the one of the new ones, right? Yeah, not the last new one, but the first new one. Where he's like, I'm a man or am I a Muppet? <laughs> I don't remember what the title of that one is. It's called Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see that that show. It looks pretty good. Um, scooting over from TV, and not less of a trailer, but a couple of, like interesting takes from Hollywood. I saw that Sony finally came around and they said they're super interested in working with Disney on making multiple Spider-Man MCU movies. What the hell? Which is so different than what we were dealing with before. Did someone get fired? Uh, I don't know. (laughs) I think they realized that someone did the math and said, you know what, we'll make more money with Disney than on our own. I was always hoping, and I don't know if it's possible, you know, Disney's already a huge multi-conglomerate giant just buy Sony or at least buy the Marvel rights back Yeah. because I feel like they're pushing out as many movies as they can right now to take advantage of because maybe they are going to sell it back to them because all of a sudden you've got like Venom 2, Morpheus, you got Morbius, uh, also Morbius. Morbius. Morpheus is from Matrix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he asks which pill he'd like to take. <laughs> he took the vampire pill. <laughs> the red pill, please. Yeah, yeah. Morbius, uh, I think like Sinister Six, there's all sorts of crap coming out. I heard they might make a Craven the Hunter movie. I saw one day like 
uh, Spider Woman. Yeah, Spider Woman. Yeah. Like so, they're they're going ham on the one little Spider Verse part of the Marvel universe they own. Um, so yeah, I'd be stoked if not only they made a deal with Disney for multiple MCU Spider Mans, but bring everybody over. Let's all play in the MCU. Just be like, if um we give you um Marvel, can you make these movies for us? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like that, right? That's the deal. And then be like, let's do it. Um. So yeah, I saw that. And speaking of Spider Man. Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland, and his buddy, uh, Star-Lord, Chris Pratt, posted the other day that they want to host their own Dungeons & Dragons tournament with the cast of Avengers. What? Wait, do they even play? I don't know. <laughs> Someone must play. I mean, how would they come up with that on their own? Mark Ruffalo. He Mark Ruffalo like- would totally play. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Mark tweeted. I follow Mark Ruffalo on Twitter, and he tweeted... Um, he saw that they were hiring for extras for some other show in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. And he says, is this open casting? I'd like to come. <laughs> and then, like, the movie comes out and then the Easter egg yeah, was here. He's in the background <laughs> just hanging out eating a pizza or something. That guy's awesome. Well, they did a really good job with casting, but, like, I would be so excited. I watched that. They put that made into, like, a television show. Yeah. And you got to watch everybody from the MCU play board games. Whether, you know, some of them aren't into it. They're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know who did that for a while? Well, let's take a quick break and we'll talk about some more. So on the flip side, we'll talk about um, some more board game stuff. And I'll also hit the new jacuzzi. I got to talk about uh, Planet of the Apes. Is it a reboot? Is it a sequel? We're going to talk about bomb sniffing cyber medic locusts. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, mayonnaise ice cream bars. Mmm, good. <laughs> what the- Catch you next. And we're back. So we were talking a little bit about um, board games and how Tom Holland and Chris Pratt want to host the Dungeons and Dragons, which yeah. is awesome. But it reminded me of um, Rick and Morty's creator. Um, what's his name again? Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon had a show that was literally them playing Dungeons and Dragons. And what they would do, it was like... Um, it was an exclusive to some sort of weird television channel that no one in the world had. But because of that, they eventually put him for free, I think, on YouTube. Right. And I watched a handful of them. And he, what he would do is he'd bring on a handful of comedians because no one really knew how the hell to play Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. It was super funny. So they would each do their thing, and they would cut away from them playing and animate what was happening. So he'd be like, my elf just shanked your dragon, you know, and then they oh, would yeah. do it. And it was really clever. That'd be cool if they do that, too. Yeah, so I, I think you could take literally that entire concept and put it towards this thing with just more people. Star Lord as like the dungeon master. Yeah, he's like reading off the book. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's like, "You've rolled a seven. Now you must fight or flee." You know, I've never. Have you ever actually played Dungeons and Dragons? No, that's like next level, dude. That is next level. You remember in a? Did you ever watch um, Eye Zombie? A little bit. To First where, season. I think it might be a later season where she starts eating this. I mean, she ate this brain of this dude that plays Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. So she gets into it. And then, you know, how her boss, he's kind of nerdy too. And he gets everybody to play it. And like all the other people start playing. So that's awesome. It's pretty funny, like how they narrate and play that game. I don't know, really know. Well, if anybody wanted to invite me to play Dungeons and Dragons, I would try. Because I feel like it's one of those things that's almost like iconic in pop culture at this yeah. point like when i was young i don't think my mom let me play because she thought it was devilish she's like <laughs> you don't play that devil stuff and it's just a silly like game but you see it all the time stranger things yeah. like you're saying i zombie but how many shows have we seen or movies where they've incorporated dungeons and dragons that'd be cool if they like guess the stranger things kids can play That'd be awesome. Right? Yeah. I, honestly, you know, we should just start our own Dungeon & Dragons show. <laughs> it probably exists somewhere on YouTube. It's already awesome. Good for them. We need to find an animator. Had to learn how to play. Yeah. Well, yeah. If anybody has free time, check out the one by Dan Harmon because it is really good. I honestly don't remember what it's called, but I'm sure if you search Dan yeah. Harmon Dungeons & Dragons, you'd find it. It's it's real well done and funny. Um, so I think it's time to see what's bubbling up in the new jacuzzi. So my first story Wait, wait, wait Before we get into that Last episode you promised us oh. That you were going to watch That one show on Hulu Right? Utopia Falls I almost forgot That's fair I'm glad you brought that up So I did it I took one for the team 
and I watched Utopia Falls. So um, don't watch it. <laughs> That's it is, a hot take. <laughs> it's well, well, it's kind of interesting. So I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure my opinion was not so far out there. Maybe I'm the only one in the world who doesn't like it. And honestly, it has a lot of love on the internet. So it is what we thought it was. It's basically Glee meets the Hunger Games. Yeah. They're in the future. And so um, what's happened is just like all good futures, um, everything's gone to hell and they're rebuilding. Uh, they they basically they kind of glean over the whole thing really quick in the beginning, and they're saying that between technology, so apparently technology sucks us down, which not not shocking. And they said, um, I don't know how they say, it, but basically like almost like nuclear war or something, devastated the entire world. And so they they're not underground, but they've got this weird domed like virtual dome type shield over this area that they call Babylon, New Babylon. The dome. Yeah. So they're all living in New Babylon under this weird virtual dome thing. And they explain to us as the show is kind of going that everybody's been put into like sectors. So everybody works in their own like area. Like, oh, these guys over here are the makers. These guys over here are the growers. These guys are the the thinkers. You know, everybody has a specific thing that they're assigned to and they have to do it. It's like their jobs. It's their jobs. Right. But you have to be in that. And they all live together. So all the makers live together. All the growers live together. And they all have to work in their own areas. And that's all they do. That's totally in Divergent, right? Yeah, it's just like Divergent. Yeah. So, um, and they do this weird thing. So where the Hunger Games would take all the youth and make them battle to the death for fun. Yeah. <laughs> this show takes the exact same concept. But instead they dance battle. <laughs> so they have a bunch of young just beautiful looking young actors playing and on their 16th birthday they all have to compete in this dance contest right to like say thank you to the people running their show you know and i know it's it's, it's literally as stupid as it sounds what's even funnier is every one of these 16 year olds are a bunch of 25 30 year old actors they don't none of them look anywhere near 16 and so they each they, they only the top 25 get picked from the different sectors and so the show starts off with all the people gathering in their sectors like divergent <laughs> waiting to see which person which 16 year old is going to be picked out of their group oh that's a hunger games yeah okay like hunger yeah. games and they like they start picking them and they they mention oh no two people never get picked from the same sector because there's these two guys and they're in like the criminal sector yeah so like they, they have this whole sector like bad people are getting a second chance and so they're like oh they never picked two people from the second chance group before and then they do of course like oh nice and so these 25 16 year olds get picked and they show up and they have to start learning how to dance and shake and do the thing and some of them sing like it also turns into like a straight music video wait so prior to being picked they have no experience of dancing well, they're all kind of practicing a little bit. They show one yeah. girl kind of practice dancing because they all know that 16, they'll randomly pick them and they all enter mm. to be picked. But only the top 25 get chosen, right. right? It's like flash dance. So the top 25 people get picked and they get to go to this thing. They all start dancing and singing. It turns into a music video, a bunch of good looking ladies singing, a bunch of good looking men dancing. Um, and so that kind of goes on. And already, like, things are going sideways. There's somebody devious trying to, like, control them. And they don't know what it is. And then there's somebody else that's leaving them secret messages says, Hey, if you want to win this weird dance-off thing that we're doing, you got to sneak outside of our dome and go to this one place. And so they all think that they're, like, trying to trick each other because the, the, they get voted off American Idol style, basically. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we're just going to get voted off if we go find it. But a few of them decide to sneak away and go see what the secret advantage is. And they stumble into this room and they walk inside. And this is when it gets really stupid and extra good. And so they walk in this room and they go, wow, this reminds me. And the room's full of like all the stuff from like the 90s and the 2000s. Like there's like hip hop stuff on the wall and like all sorts of pop culture. They show that in the trailer, right? Yeah. 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 Mm And she goes, this reminds me of the library back at the the domed place. And all of a sudden, Snoop Dogg's voice comes over and goes, <laughs> welcome to the library. In the most Snoop Doggy voice you've ever heard. He's like, welcome to the library, son. <laughs> what the church up, you know? The hologram comes out. <laughs> no holograms yet, but it's definitely Snoop Dogg's voice. And they're like, oh my God, it talks. And he's like, yeah, talk what you need. <laughs> 
you know? <laughs> so they're like, what is this? And he's like, here, you can learn about everything that was awesome. And he pops up, what would you, music style dancing, would you like to learn? And then she starts listing things. And he's like, and they're like, country? Blues music? Because they're only learning like one very specific boring dance style. Right, right. And it's like hip hop. And they go, what's hip hop? And Snoop's like, damn, son, let me show you some hip hop. And then it starts cutting the videos of people rapping. And it starts off with like NOS and it's like zooming around. And like now we're like in a computer mind. We're just seeing like every hip hop artist right, ever right. flying by. And it's like, like what the f are we watching? You seem like you like this show. No. Well, it's <laughs> not a good show. So I, I wanted to make sure that I didn't think, well, maybe everybody else likes this show and I'm just weird. So I jump on the internet and it's got like a 2% on IDMB. Damn. It's got like a 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. However... This show is clearly made for a very specific demographic, and I'm not it. That demographic on Twitter loves this show. If you were to uh, look up Utopia Falls, search it on Twitter specifically. Hashtag. Yeah. You'll find nothing but love. And I think part of what it does do well is it looks good. It's definitely got some good production values. It's got really good dance chore choreography. It's got lots of awesome music. But it has a good uh, cast of diverse characters. Lots of LGBTQ stuff going on. Uh, everybody from every type of culture. And so that's that's all really good. So it's got some good things. But this show is clearly made for 14 to like 22 year olds. And it's not made for not me. For you. Not for me. So unless you're between the ages of 14 and 22, you can save your time. You don't have to watch it. Well, good to know. Yeah, that's, that's my hot Utopia Falls take. <laughs> so... Well, thanks for the follow through. Yeah, I told you I would, and I did, and I, it was painful, but I did it. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I kind of fast forward through a couple parts of it because there was a lot of dancing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not much a musical person myself. It wasn't really a musical per se, to where they just randomly were dancing, singing for no reason. They only danced and sang, at least in the episode that I saw, when they were competing. Mm. So at least it mm. kind of made sense, but it was the whole thing was stupid. Uh, but moving on to our news jacuzzi takes. Uh, I saw that they're coming out already with a new Planet of the Apes. And Twitter was all like a flutter with the fact that they originally thought it was going to be a reboot. And I was like, oh my god, they're going to reboot Planet of the Apes again? Because they've already rebooted it twice. Yeah. I don't think I've seen the last one. You never saw the last one? No. My wife loves these movies. Yeah, for I some mean, reason. Loves them. I don't really care for them all that much. They're fine. So you're saying she actually watches this one? She loves it. We go to the theater to see these <laughs> movies. I don't know why. She legitimately loves them. So um, I don't know. But yeah, I've seen all the Planet of the Apes movies in the theaters. But uh, yeah, so apparently everybody was all worried that this was going to be a, um, a reboot. Because they already remember that there was the original old 60s version of the Planet yeah. of the Apes TV show. Then they rebooted it with Marky Mark. Yeah. A lot of people forget about that piece of crap. And that was Tim Burton. Tim freaking Scissorhand Burton. Oh, is that what, that's why the <laughs> monkey looks so weird. Yeah. And then they redid it this time. And it, I think this has been their most successful attempt. Uh, but yes, they are coming out with a new Planet of the Apes. But the director just tweeted yesterday that he promises it's a continuation, not a reboot. Of the last one? Yeah. Which at a certain point, the apes just have to be in charge. Because we started off with... Uh, um, what's his face? James Franco? Yeah, Franco with a uh, little monkey, right? And it starts to move along. And then in the last one, by the time we get to the one I just watched, it's straight up war. It's the future, and they're fighting them, the monkeys. Caesar was on their side, but they piss Caesar off enough that he joins the monkeys, and the right. monkey strip kicks some ass. So I would imagine if they make another one that we could go ahead and probably jump. Because what they haven't done yet is the part, what was the big twist of the original uh, Planet of the Apes was when the guy thought he was on some sort of weird planet. He was an astronaut that crash landed, only to find out that he wasn't on another planet. He'd actually just crash landed in the future. The monkeys had taken over, so they could totally do that now because the monkeys yeah. have taken over. Because that was the ending of the Marky Mark one. Yeah, so they can they can. I think what we're seeing and probably what got everybody all twisted is they're going to basically be rebooting the Marky Mark version to fall in line what's been happening with this current version, hmm. which makes sense. So good or bad, I don't know. But I saw that was coming out. I saw that Twitter was all up in arms about it. Everybody's panties were in a bunch. So, is there a date on the yet? No, it's yeah. it's just just starting. Just starting. My second my second hot news jacuzzi take is the best thing ever. It's actually 
uh, about bomb sniffing cyborg locusts. This also could fall into our our fun little feature of the futures now. <laughs> That's a crazy as header header dude. Yeah, bomb sniffing cyborg locusts. So scientists have yes found a way to turn locusts into explosive sniffing cyborgs. According to a study found, funded by our U.S. Navy, the idea is to hijack the insect's incredible sense of smell rather than coming up with an artificial detection method from scratch. So this isn't actually that unusual. Uh, I read it in the past that they've done similar things with bees. Um, it says here that they call when they use like a, a bug like that and start to kind of mess with it with technology, they call them bio robots. And so they actually implant some sort of weird little electrode into the brains of the locusts. And this isn't something that they're thinking might work. They've actually done it. What the heck? They've it's tested? Tested and done it. Yeah, they started testing it in 2016 where they had a $750,000 grant. And apparently that's all it takes to get yourself some bomb sniffing cyborg locusts. But this will be the first time ever that locusts are a good thing. You yeah. know, anybody who's ever seen a horror movie or read the Bible, that's usually the end of times. <laughs> this might save us from the end of times. So when you saw locusts training, you're like, I'm like, oh my God, it's over. Because everybody knows that's going to be like, that's like one of the seven signs of like the apocalypse. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, bomb sniffing uh, locusts are pretty cool. It's a unique multivariant fingerprint that allows the locust to distinguish between explosive vapors and non-explosive chemicals, according to this paper's abstract. Um, they hijacked them to develop the hybrid chemical sensing approach. So uh, apparently this is something because they've tested it, uh, they've proven that it works, that they're actually going to be implementing into our U.S. Uh, military service. Damn. So, pretty cool, right? It's a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Robotic humans. Well, I mean, we see more and more. I mean, the, the line between robots and humans is getting so thin that, yeah, it's we'll be replaced. We'll replace ourselves this is where we're going yeah. for sure. I need to replace my knees. <laughs> cyborg knees you mean like new legs I'd be taller a little bit taller you can, you can slam the ball so the next thing I saw about is also kind of futuristic but equally disgusting is um, they've created a mayonnaise ice cream bar that they say is actually better than it sounds do you, do you, <laughs> yeah, like you teased that I was grossed <laughs> out dude do you like mayonnaise <laughs> Not by itself. I mean, you're like, if you put on something else, and yeah. You're not into frozen mayonnaise? So what do they do? Put, like, mayonnaise into a little um, ice cream cutter thing and take it out? Right. So the Calorie Monster Cheerio Creamy Mayonnaise Flavor. That's what they're calling it because this is a... a long ass name. Well, it comes from Asia, which is not shocking really at all. Um, is it? It's an ice cream bar from Japan's Morinaga Milk Industry. So apparently that's the name of the company. Um, for their 35th anniversary, they've come up with this limited edition version. Um, this thing looks disgusting, but supposedly it's not as bad as they say it is. Uh, when you eat it, it has a crispy feel of like a chocolate coating and texture. So it's got like it almost looks like from the picture you're looking at it that it looks. Um, like a Nestle Crunch. Yeah. You know, like a white chocolate Nestle Crunch. And I almost think that's what it is. So they've done something smart. Like for whatever reason, I think the whole mayonnaise part of it is the gimmick to sell it. But the outside of it is this crispy texture of cookies. And then you get into the inside of it and it's white chocolate. And then once you get past the very core of it is frozen mayonnaise. And it says, oh, that part right there? Yeah, so we're looking at it, and it looks like, imagine an ice cream bar with a chunk sliced off on it. The outside is the crispy, you know, rice crispy chunky part. Then it's the white chocolate for the most part. And then it has a, a nice tube of mayonnaise running through the middle of it like a Twinkie. <laughs> it's all white. You're just going to eat it. Like, what the hell? Yeah, the whole thing's white, so you don't really know. You can't, like, be, like try to avoid the mayonnaise. It's like, dude, have you tried van vanilla ice cream with mayonnaise before? That just sounds gross. It does sound gross. Ugh. Yeah, so, yeah. It says, the impression of the sourness of the mayonnaise is quite mild, thanks to the white chocolate sandwich between them. The Calorie Monster Ch Cello Creamy Mayonnaise Bar 
tastes like an ice cream that can be enjoyed as an ice cream as a chocolate ice cream while using the unusual taste of mayonnaise to make it different. Weird. So, is it Japanese mayonnaise? Or is it like regular mayonnaise? Was that different? Yeah, man. What does Japanese mayonnaise taste like? Um, I don't know, but it's different. I, I believe you. I know that like a Mexican sour cream is different than you know regular white folk sour cream. It's actually way better. I always prefer it. Um, but apparently these people have done all sorts of weird stuff. They've done versions that have ketchup and mustard. So they do a lot of gimmicky things. Their their logo seems to be some sort of chicken head for some reason. Hmm. I don't know why. Maybe they have a chicken flavored one. This this taste tester said, you know, it was bad, but they've had worse. <laughs> so I, I mean, I've I'm never pro- heard of yeah. some sort of amazing recommendation. It. But yeah, mayonnaise, frozen mayonnaise. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. But that's that's kind of it. That's all I had for today. Oh, I want one last thing because we hadn't talked about it in a while. Is uh, we hadn't done any hot tater music. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, and I got yeah. to thinking about it when we were talking about Dave and Lil Dicky. That there's this new rapper that I'm totally digging on, and I know you know who it is called Young Gravy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a dumb name too. He's almost kind of gimmicky himself. He's got this really deep voice, but he is so good i was rapping his lyrics without knowing that it was young gravy my wife is like what the hell are you saying well you know the hey alexa <laughs> yeah i'm gonna say yeah. it. You no. sing it you're gonna sing it <laughs> no you have a deep voice you can almost i bet no. you could do a young gravy impression probably but it's, it's <laughs> you refuse it's hey funny. alexa hey alexa how many bitches can you fit in the tesla yeah yeah that guy i'm not nearly as good as him but yeah so uh, this might answer your question. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what's she going to say? The sun occupies a volume larger. Oh. Than oh. Alexa, stop. She thought, she I was. I thought maybe she was going to tell me how many I could fit in a Tesla. Yeah. And she starts talking about the sun. So she, I wasn't enunciating enough, I don't think. But Young Gravy, he has a lot of, he just came out with a, he has his own, his own album, but then he just came out with another album with another young hip hop guy. I don't even know how you say his name. It's like BBNO dollar sign. They're always like together, though, right? Most of the time. Well, I think the one guy is like um, the producer, but he also sings and raps. Right. Um, I'm looking it up now to see if I can try to pronounce the other dude's name. Well, Young is spelled Y U N G. Yeah. Their newest album is called Baby Gravy Two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like Bubba Nose. Bubba, I don't know. It's B B N O dollar sign. I have to look it up on like the YouTube's when some younger, cooler kid will tell Dude, me how you say it. Just like little Dicky, this guy looks so dumb. Too, oh, though. total dweebs, and they yeah. they also kind of own it too. Where he's always wearing like flowery, like like but kind of like the shirt I have on right now. Where yeah. they're about to go to like a luau or something. Yeah, somebody called that a yeah. Living room curtain or something. <laughs> yes, that's true. Earlier today, someone called my shirt, asked me if I'd stolen it from my living room curtains. <laughs> I had to take a picture and post it on there. But yeah, from this new album, there's a lot of great songs. Uh, there's one song called Justin Bieber's Wrist that I haven't listened to yet, but that sounds amazing. But I really like Off the Goop, which I don't think is about um, Gwyneth. Uh, yeah, Gwyneth and her thing, but it could be. And then my other favorite one is called Welcome to Chili's, which is also really good. Oh, and Shining on My Ex. And these are just from this Young Gravy or Baby Gravy 2 album. This is just came out, right? This just album? came out. Yeah. So, yeah, anybody out there who likes silly rap music is not easily offended because he does say some filthy things. Young Gravy is hilarious. And so, yeah, uh, check it out. I dig it. Is he coming to town anytime soon? I don't think he's saying that. Because you would totally go. Oh, I would totally go to a Young Gravy concert, especially if this other dude was with him because they're really good solo and together. I don't know. I'd have to look. Let's see. Young... On Spotify, it tells you like tour dates too. I didn't see it on there. Oh, maybe he's not like big enough yet. He has a whole album though. Young. All right, we're checking. This is captivating podcasting as we look to see. So yeah, he's on tour. Let's see if he's coming to us. See all concerts. He is in Minneapolis, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin. Is that it? Come on. Oh, well, according... <clears throat> oh, here they go. That's loading. I feel like Portland's like the perfect demographic for him. 
It doesn't. I don't know, does he not even get close enough? It shows him going to San oh. Antonio. Yeah, I don't Memphis, see this at all. Georgia. No, he doesn't even really come to the West Coast. The closest he gets to the West Coast is Texas. Not even close. He didn't come anywhere near. Maybe he's either he a, just did a West Coast tour, or he's gonna do one later. Yeah. Because yeah, you're right. It's all Midwest stuff. He, I think he himself is a little country. So he doesn't sound country, but I think that's where he's from. Maybe I'll have to look more into it. But yeah. So um, if anybody's living in anywhere in the Midwest, you can go see Young Gravy live and in person. Let us know if he's good or not. But the guy's hilarious, and he's a great rapper. I wish I could rap like him. He's got like an insanely deep voice. Yeah. So he he. Doesn't sound like what he looks like. No, <laughs> he looks like a total dork. Yeah, like a real dork. But yeah, Little Dicky. If it wasn't for Little Dicky, the Young Gravies of the world couldn't exist. I mean, Young Gravy is also a very stupid rap name, but it's part of his persona. But they're they're ba- they're basically living your life you wanted. Yeah. So everything I wanted to be when I was that age <laughs> is apparently able, people are able to do it now. I'm like, yeah. ah, you're born too wrong soon. era. I could become like just old old boy the rapper. Yeah. Somebody Call you old boy. Old boy. All right. With that, we'll sign off. We'll catch you next time on the flippity flip. And adios. I'm Batman.